Okay, so this is a current UI in Shutterstock. It's called the Catalog Manager, and it's uh, designed to allow contributors, people that contribute media like stock photos or images or vectors or videos, um, to manage so they can create sets of content. So here's some sets. They can select things and reorder them and drag them and drop them. Uh, they can delete things from sets. They can look at the total earnings and the total downloads because Shutterstock is a stock photography site and they pay out earnings based on uh, downloads. Um, they can collapse the sets and then filter by all things. They can do a whole bunch of other filters. So the component that I'm working on right now is to shift this page from um, legacy jQuery sort of spaghetti uh, and a custom rolled pub sub framework into React. So this is the React version running locally on my machine. And right now we've got a limited set of features. The piece that I'm working on is the um, media type selector and then the set selector on the side here. And that's all I've got working in this in this toggle. And so the, uh, the stack, stack that we're using is React. And I'll show you kind of the main entry point here. Um, we're using a couple other pieces as well including Redux um, for managing state and the concept of a, a store. Um, but I guess I'll start with the, the state model first. Um, and I guess a great place to start when you're working with an app like this is to sort of enumerate all of the state in the application. And uh, the way that I broke this out was in two sort of sections. One is for the UI state and one is for actual application state. So the selected set ID, for example, if I reload the page, the selected set ID defaults to catalog, which has an internal ID of all, um, which you can kind of see right here. And the selected media IDs, um, that maps to, if I actually had media in here and I was clicking on these, that's what that would map to. Um, the selected set summary uh, would also map to sort of metadata about a specific set. So if I click on this Manhattan set, then I can see the title and the earnings and the downloads. That's what that maps to. Um, whether the sets are visible or not maps to this toggle. So that's what's controlling that in the React version. Um, and then there's application states. So like a filter type, the value, which defaults to keywords. But if I changed this to date uploaded, then it would map to date uploaded and image ID. These are three different ways that users can filter content. Um, which page, because the results are paginated as they come back from the API, whatever value uh, is in the filter um, field. So they can type a value in here, whether they're searching by keywords or date uploaded and then hit the filter button. Uh, the page size defaults to 100. The total media count, um, which is listed here uh, in the catalog. Uh, the oldest upload date, which they need so that they can properly set the, um, the bounds on this filter for date uploaded so that they can't go back in time um, previous to the earlier versions. The sort order, which uh, is this drop down here. So I can sort by uh, most popular, newest first, oldest first. And then the media types, um, there's catalog, vector, and illustration. So um, there will be the need to add more media types, but this just lets people filter by looking at, I can see my entire catalog, I can look at all of the vectors I've uploaded or all of the illustrations that I've uploaded. Um, and then the media itself, which I haven't built yet, but would correspond to this section here, uh, showing the media and being able to select it. So the React specific uh, stuff here, um, I'm using ES6. There's nothing really React specific about this. Um, the idea is just to figure out one object that could model all of the state necessary, the application state and the UI state uh, and build from that. And right now there's no async ac uh, asynchronous actions happening. There's only synchronous data. So I think it's good to model um, the interaction and the state uh, synchronously and then add asynchronicity into the equation later. And so without jumping through the whole stack, uh, I was wanting to look at an opportunity to extract and refactor a couple of pieces. And so if we take a look at uh, components, there's a bunch of these JSX components. Specifically, if we look at the set list view, um, which maps to, I can open up the React Dev Tools. And we can actually get a great view that way. So we'll connect to React. We can look at the top level. Here's my catalog manager component. Uh, I've got a bunch of containers. Here's my content filter view at the top. Um, another container. 
and the containers are purely for layout and presentation. Um, here's my set list view. You'll notice that has this connect wrapper, but the, the internal component is set list view. Connect is part of a Redux specific thing. Um, set list view is, is here. So that's the component we're looking at there. So if I open, go back to the code here and take a look at it, we can see a couple things. The first one that's interesting is that the code for this, um, it's, I'm not inheriting from uh, react.component. So if I wanted to say like class set list view equals uh, um, extends react.component, and then I could have a constructor in ES6, and I could call super. Um, but I'm not required to do that. Another way that you may have seen this is to uh, say like let set list view equals react.create class and then I can just provide a, uh, a definition via object literal. So these are two ways that you can create React components. The third is just to provide a function that takes a set of props. So if I just collapsed all these down, I could call them props. Um, and as long as it's just a pure function that takes a set of props, that's all that React needs under the hood. Um, the advantage to this is that you don't have to inherit all of the React specific methods, uh, like component did update, uh, you can see it component did mount, all that kind of stuff. Um, and treating your application as pure functions that are a list of props, as opposed to um, extending from base classes like we did in the Backbone era, uh, this is nice. I can see exactly what is being passed in here. The JSX stuff uh, is where it gets a little confusing because it looks like I've got HTML in my JavaScript, but it's not really. Um, so I've got uh, a, a list item here, uh, and that is based on the sets that I pass in. I map and create the list items, so that's showing up here. And if I take a look at one of these, and I click on the React tab, way down, there we go. So there's my list of sets, and there's my list item, and I can see that there's a bunch of those that go through. Actually, this is the one here. So each list item. Um, but my function just receives as input a list of those sets, uh, creates a JSX expression, which just evaluates to JavaScript when it's compiled. Um, but this list item has a bunch of stuff that is common or shared between another component, uh, which is where I wanted to get to with the refactoring. Um, so the concept in the state model, let me just open that up again. The concept is that I've got a selected set ID, and my default is all. So if I reload the page, I've got catalog. But I can click um, on vectors. That's another set, like in, in terms of domain logic. It may behave differently under the hood. There may be a different service that it connects to. Um, but for our purposes in the UI, I think that representing this piece of UI state as just a selected set ID, um, regardless of what the domain concept is, is great just to keep ourselves sane. Um, but I can also select one of these sets down here. And when I do that, I've got a, some logging hooked up. And you can kind of see that when I click um, selected the awesome desert set, then that ID changed here. And if I click catalog, you can see that all was picked, vector, illustrations. So internally, it's a set. Um, but the, the way that the ID is managed uh, it could be one of these IDs or one of these magic strings that would trigger a different request to a different service to get something like this. The place where the duplication comes in is I started by building the set list view first, and then I added this special case later once I understood a little bit more about the domain with the catalog vectors and illustrations, the media type filters. And so if I look at um, media type filters, let me split this in two. You can see that there's some duplication here. So if I scroll this down and try to make this really clear. So here's my list item, and I've got a bunch of styles that I'm passing. Um, I've got my click handler, I've got some icons, and then a name and then account. And you can see over here on the media filters, it's very similar. Um, there's some differences in uh, the conditional. So for example, whether I, I uh, display the selected highlight on the background, the blue, the blue background um, is derived from the media type.id versus the set ID. But the logic is still the same, and so I was thinking it would be good to try and extract this piece uh, into a common component. 
And this is something that uh, I think is really nice about React is that the same way that you manage abstracting or creating abstractions or extractive factoring when you have duplicated code, uh, you can do the exact same thing with your JSX code here. And uh, so that's kind of where I wanted to go. And I'm not sure exactly how this is going to go forward, but I, I'd like the end result to be that I don't have to have this duplication because if I want to like add a third list, that uses an icon or has the concept of being the selected highlight being toggled, then I'd have to duplicate this again. And I think now is the appropriate time to refactor. So if I was gonna refactor this, uh, I think one of the best ways and one of the most expressive ways with JSX is to just write the component that I wish I had. Um, I'm not writing tests, but I can still kind of use that outside inflow. So if we had the concept of a list item, um, we could do that, and they can be single-sided in React. And in React, I've got two things that are part of any component, um, state and props. And the only thing that I'm concerned with here is passing on the relevant props. Um, so in this case, I think I'll pass on uh, the onClick, uh, on set click. And uh, then let's look at what else do we need? I guess we need styles, but we could pull that in specific to, um, I guess we could use identifier. Um, I guess they're both key in this case, so I don't even need to do that. Um, I could pass in the entity like that. And anything else that I'm going to need? Um, this icon, that you might be able to make a case that I could pull this out into an icon. And that could just get information from the parent. But let's just stick to this one for now and see if we can pull it out. Uh, I guess the name property, no, they are both use name on the entity. Count is slightly different. I've got total item count, and this is just because the, uh, uh, let's look at the state model again. If I look at count, um, count on the media types it is the key, and then uh, I think I have to look at my set stub, which is list sets. I'm working just from stubs so that I'm not doing anything asynchronously here. Yeah, so total item count. Um, the interesting thing is that this API is not yet complete. So I could just go in here and refactor my stub to say count. Um, and then I guess I don't need to do that. So now I just need to come back in here and change total item count to count. And then the duplication in how this thing is structured is pretty much identical. Um, there's one further difference, uh, the icon that shows up. Um, so this icon in the case of sets, um, the user has the ability to make a set public and that's what this little icon. So any of these sets that are public um, will show up as published icon set. This is just a function that takes in the set and returns some style information. So if I look at styles, go to set published icon. So that just passes a set in. And the way that React um, uses the style property is you just pass an object, which is a mapping of CSS properties. Instead of using dashed properties, you used camel case properties. Um, so in this case, the visibility of that icon is what we want to use. And the reason that's significant is because we still want the block to take up the space for the icon, um, but we don't want the icon to show. So if the set's public, then it's visible, otherwise it's hidden. Uh, this is kind of one of the nice things about React is being able to use um, JavaScript to control style information. Then you don't have to worry about style sheets, you don't have to worry about CSS variables. I can just still use all the semantics of CSS that I know, but work with them in a way that's functional and just uses JavaScript or ES2015 in this case. Okay, so I made a change to my state model to fix uh, so that I've got a count property on the media types as well as a count property on the sets. Um, 
set items individually themselves. So that's different, or that's the same normalized. The only different one is this icon here. Uh, so in one case, um, I've got a map of uh, media type icons. So I can take a look at that here. And this is based on the type, and then it grabs a bunch of background positions. So I could probably convert this into a function that takes the media type um, and then just pass a reference like that. So let's see if we can do that first so that before we do the refactoring. So styles.set published icon, styles.media type icon. And we can pass in the media type. I'm just going to go and before we actually make that guy, let's put him up here. Oops. Get rid of that. Uh, let's put him aside for now and just remember kind of what we wanted to create. Let's make this duplication exactly the same so that they work um, the same before we can factor out a component. So now I have a function that I give uh, to determine which type of icon to show up here. Uh, so I need to refactor my function down here so that it's no longer, so let's just call it media type icon, make it a function using ES2015 notation, media type, and uh, in this case uh, we want to probably do a switch on um, media type dot ID and I'm forgetting my switch syntax but I have a reducers that I'm using switches in there we go I never remember the switch syntax because I don't use it very frequently uh, so let's do that, and then we can say case um, all case vector case illustration, and then default, and the default case will just return an empty object literal, because remember this is a map of style information. So now I can just yoink these from here. And then I can get rid of media type icon map and make the way that these work very similar. Uh, so let's just make sure that I change that. So styles.media type icon, media type. And did everything compile okay? Yep. So let's reload and just make sure I didn't break anything with that refactor. Uh, yeah, that looks good. So they have their icon here, which is the book and the pen and the image. And then these still have their public icon if they're public. This guy's a special case in that he does the collapse, but there's an opportunity to still refactor out with the concept of an icon. Cool, so let's move this guy back over here. Uh, we've got that. I'm just gonna do a commit because I do want to capture that in isolation. Um, prepare. Uh, for extract refactor of list item. Yeah, we got that. Uh, I'll leave that comment in for now just so I remember where I'm going and just add myself a note that I left uh, refactored the list of sets response key for count uh, to count. Uh, to normalize the way that we build a list item component. All right, cool. So now let's see, we've got a little bit closer to what we want. Uh, so let's try and go back to this idea. So I've got a list item. It's got a specific behavior that happens when I click on it. Um, the entity that it's containing, I don't know if entity is the right name, but we'll just pass it in anyway. Uh, I guess then we want a 
an icon um, function, icon determiner. <laughs> Let's just call it icon and we'll say styles.set published icon. Uh, anything else that we need? I don't think so. I think everything else can be extracted. Everything else we've got, everything else we can get from that. Uh, we do have set list items selected. So I'm gonna have to import styles here anyway, but I still need the styles uh, component for um, other pieces in here. Uh, this is just the, the list of things. Okay, cool. So if we do that, and then let's create our list item component. We'll call it list item.jsx. And I'm just gonna go grab some boilerplate from another file. Uh, yes, 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 those are all good. Radium's what we use. Uh, you can see here, uh, let me change this footer component to list item. And then we'll call it list item here. Uh, it doesn't want to be a div, so we can actually just go grab um, both sets of code here. And put them close together. and make sure uh, that we're working. So I'll leave this one because I wanna, I'll, I'll do it in one case and then verify that I'm not breaking it in the other after I do the refactor. So let's do that and let's say, uh, actually let's grab, get rid of all of this and just paste my JSX like HTML but not quite. Um, so the props, you can pass in like just a bag of props, but really um, it's nice to use the destructured assignment of function parameters in ES6. So in the previous file I did that um, because this, is, this object here, the destructuring, is really just a big bag of props. Remember all of these React components are just pure functional components that pass props um, and state. We don't need the state because Redux is handling that. Uh, so let's, instead of props, I guess to start we could make it work with props. Um, but we really only need a few things. Uh, so the props that we used here, um, let me copy this in here so I have a localized version and make it one. Uh, so we want the on click. On click. We want the entity. And we want the icon um, icon getter icon reference. I don't know what to call it. Never know what to call it. That's okay though. Uh, so we still need styles for set list item um, selected list ID selected set ID. I guess that's relevant. Uh, so we need to pass that along. Um, selected, selected set ID, and if we wanted to make this generic, uh, selected ID. ID, so then this just becomes selected ID uh, equals entity dot ID and entity dot ID and on click entity dot ID and this is fine and then uh, this becomes styles and we can use icon uh, with entity entity.name maybe item is a better name but for now we'll leave it as entity cool uh, so export default list item so now we can just whack 
color this. One of the nice things about React is that if I make a mistake, the console will give me a really nice error message. Uh, so now my set nodes is just a map of list items passing in the set. Let's see if we have errors. Didn't look like errors. I'm suspecting that we'll have some runtime errors. Yeah, list item is not defined. Right, because I didn't import it. So now I need to import list item from uh, list item.jsx. And let's move that together with the other JSX components. I have to wait for the asset thing to build. Okay, got something else wrong. Still not defined. Uh, oh, did I forget to name it? Did I get a compile error? This item is not defined. Let's look a little bit deeper. Our list item should be defined. Oh, I missed the T. There we go. Now, if all is good, get a different error. Okay, good. Selected ID. Selected ID is my destructuring. Uh, what did I pass it in as? Selected. I guess I should call it selected ID. This is like weird uh, camel casing versus underscore stuff, so I should probably figure that out too. Um, and get a good naming convention. But the goal is just right now to do the refactor. OK, something else. Selected ID is not defined still. Uh, oh, selected set ID. Naming. Okay, there we go. Uh, what else do I have? Oh yes, uh, this warning is interesting. So the way that React does um, performance and um, virtual DOM tree traversal to flag whether a specific piece of the virtual DOM is dirty. For example, uh, when I click on one of these, it's only rendering re-rendering a portion. Um, and I can see the selected set ID changing on the props here. And if I go all the way down, then I should have list items. And that should be changing as well uh, in here. Selected ID. Yeah, you can see that changing. Um, but yeah, what I was saying about the key property is uh, if you're missing that, then uh, React is not able to be as performant. So it just throws away the entire subtree of the virtual DOM. So adding a key property uh, for a list item should be required. So we can say key equals, um, actually we could probably just include this as part of the abstraction because we're passing the entity itself here. Uh, oh, interesting, I did do that here, but it doesn't seem to like that. So let's push it up a level, I guess, because maybe the iterator, um, something like that. So let's say key equals uh, set that ID. That's unfortunate that it wasn't able to do it there. Let's see if this fixes it, makes it happy. Yep, and if we look in the React spot, uh, now I can see, sorry, React. There's my list items and entity. And I wonder where key's coming into place. It must be just using it internally as metadata, um, but now I can see each of those. And when I click on these, now it does that. So if my refactor was successful, I should be able to replace, uh, this was just the list view um, for the sets, which is actually 
um, this guy here. But the other one, the media filter, this guy is still using just plain old list items. So let's see if we can get that abstraction. So I can just yoink this and open up the media type filters that was also using that code. And so I'm gonna grab one of those and then uh, selected set ID is right. Um, instead of set published icon, I want media type icon. And the entity is media type. And the on click will be on media type click. And the key uh, will be media type dot ID. And now I should be able to get rid of all that. And now in both cases, I'm using the abstraction. And, uh-oh. Oh, right, I forgot my import. So let's grab that, import list item. And make sure, there we go. And check the React tab to see. There we go, now I have list items. And I'm, you know, you might say that this is unnecessary, but um, in this case, at least now, if I wanna add different types of list items, uh, for example, when we go to build the image grid, um, I think these can all just be list items as well, and uh, they will change slightly in that I may need to override this um, style property, but now at least I can do that and then pass it in as a prop here. So that's my extractor factor in React uh, and JSX. Kind of cool the way that it, uh, it works. I really like that you can uh, easily compose and extract pieces of commonality uh, and make your own abstractions but under the hood, it's still just using plain old HTML semantics that we're used to. Hope you learned something and hope this was helpful.